Greetings assembled. I am Lord Schoberg. I am on the road in the lungfish somewhere in the middle of Oregon. Actually probably somewhere towards the east end of Oregon. As you can see I am rocking the Panama and I am rocking the handlebar. Um, and the answer to that is why not? I bought a hat for utilitarian reasons. Um, oh, I'm in mountain time. It just became mountain time. Wow. Now all the, the Charlie Brown Christmas specials are going to be on at a different time. Very strange. Um, you know, I bought the hat because I like keeping the sun out of my eyes and I like keeping the rain out of my hair. And, um, you know, towards that end, I, I try to make sure to take it off indoors. I don't wear my hat in restaurants. Uh, in my mind, this separates me from uh, the sort of people who uh, wear their $5 fedora with their um, Star Trek uniform t-shirt and sweatpants and still somehow look in the mirror and see Indiana Jones. Um, but, you know, whatever. I mean, I think it looks a lot less ridiculous than those trilbies everyone was wearing in Portland. I don't know. Not my style of hat, at least. Um, and, of course, no one ever takes off their trilby indoors because, you know, it's a decoration to them. And it's a hat to me, damn it! Um, and I'm wearing it now because I sometimes wear it when I drive and sometimes I don't. And it helps a little uh, against glare. And um, I figure as long as I'm podcasting, I may as well look snazzy. Uh, the handlebar mustache is also actually a little more utilitarian than you might think. Uh, first off... Um, you know, for about a month now I've been thinking I should trim my beard, but there is something about the allure of the road beard that I simply cannot deny. Uh, there is just, you know, instead of no sleep to Brooklyn, I think it's going to be no clippers to Montreal. Um, I just, um, I don't want to want to trim it. And um, so the, the handlebar actually uh, serves two purposes. Uh, one is it actually keeps my mustache out of my mouth when I'm trying to eat, which is nice, as you might imagine. Um, although the, the hair up here is not quite long enough to, uh, to get out of the way, so hopefully that'll, that'll work itself out soon. Um, the second reason is, and this may be erroneous, but I have this idea, it's similar to one of the reasons I wear suits and ties, is because it takes some effort to, um... I mean, I'm not wearing it right now because it's freaking hot out there and because I want to take a shower before I change into my good clothes. But, uh, you know, it takes a certain amount of effort to keep it together to wear a, a suit and tie when you are living in a van. And um, I think that wearing it kind of sends a signal that I am, you know, I'm not dissolute. I am not, uh, you know, I... I I'm doing this by choice, not because uh, poverty or mental illness have forced me into a uh, into an alternative lifestyle. I, I guess mental illness is debatable. Um, and similarly, I kind of feel like who could possibly look at someone um, wearing a handlebar mustache and say that guy is dangerous? I think the last person who could do that uh, died in uh, Oklahoma City in. Uh, 1902 was about when handlebar mustache, you know, stopped being like, oh my god, a man came into town with a gun and a handlebar mustache. This is trouble. We don't like the looks of your mustache, sir. This is a mutton chop town. Um, so, I mean, I kind of feel that, you know, the fact that I, that I can, I can rock a handlebar said something about my ability to take a little time out of the day to pay attention to my appearance. Um, and, uh, I don't know, like I said, I mean, it, I don't feel like I look intimidating, even though, you know, I'm this huge six foot four guy living in a van, I just kind of, I, I just kind of hope that it, it lends a more of a friendly air, um, and we'll see if that's true or not, um, it certainly, uh, sets me apart, but anyhow, and also I like it, you know, it's, it's fun, I mean, uh, facial hair is just an amazingly fun thing. It's like growing Play-Doh on your face. In fact, you know, there's that old Play-Doh barbershop thing. You know, you're just always extruding Play-Doh and you get to shape it however you want. I can make freaking topiary out of it. Um, 
that's a bit of a, a disturbing analogy, but you know, work with me. So, um, so yeah, that is that is the uh, what I look like uh, these days, and um, I think it looks better with the suit. But well, you know, you gotta you, know, you gotta be comfortable sometime, and at least I'm not wearing you know black socks with my sandals. <laughs> when you start describing your your uh, sartorial choices with at least I'm not, maybe that should make you pause. But I am not pausing. Speaking of not pausing, it turns out that you cannot actually show, you can't flip the camera around on this thing while uh, you're recording. So I have to flip it around the way that our caveman ancestors did by hand. And this is what I'm looking right now. Some uh, very nice hills and uh, uh, the ass end of a, of, a, uh, of a truck. Oh, look, oh no, is that a goat? Is that a cow? Looks kind of cowish with a long neck. No, it's the mystery cow. Um, yeah, pretty stuff. I think I said that at the beginning now. I don't know. Anyhow, <laughs> long-term memory, short-term memory. It's all wonderful. So I don't want to make this too long. Um, but as long as I'm doing this, let me talk a little bit. I, I enjoyed Bend. Um, felt a little bit like the Bakersfield of Oregon, but, you know, I had a really nice time chatting with a reader in uh, the Blue Moon hub or something like that that had oh man imperial red is my new favorite micro brew uh, apparently it's something that's becoming more common where it's like a red ale but it's more hoppy and oh man the one i had i don't remember what it was called but the one i had there which was a, a kind of a special not a everyday thing was just this gorgeous gorgeous combination of uh bitter and sweet that just it I I should have remembered the name and I'm sure I could look it up because uh, it was just one of the finest beers I have had and I've had a lot of uh, nice beers I like an IPA um, but uh, you know I, I'm more of a red and brown ale guy or pale ale or even you know sometimes a lager or a pilsner um, it used to be under the stouts I think if I'm someplace cold and rainy I might you know hit a stout but Usually these days I get a half and half if I want a stout anyway, which is pretty tasty, or a black and tan, depending on how, much, how concerned you are about offending theoretical Irish people. <laughs> uh, that's actually a thing, um, and uh, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Um, so yeah, but I had a fun time. I, uh, you know, I crashed in some sort of sort of semi-industrial area and was not hassled by anyone. And uh, disturbing number of swastikas on the bathroom stalls in the Safeway. I am certainly used to graffiti, and um, I am used to the odd swastika because at least in my head, some you know junior high schooler has decided he's just going to be so freaking rebellious. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, to necessarily infer anything from it about East Bend. I mean, maybe there's just like two guys who use that bathroom a lot, or freaking work in the Safeway. That's a scary thought. And it's like you know, the sort of people who write um, swastikas and '88 and 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 uh, stormtrooper symbols on on uh, the Nazi ones, not the Star Trek ones on bathroom walls are just young, freaking angry white guys who don't even, you know, have an idea of, of how rage can be directed usefully and uh, are bored out of their minds, at least that's my theory. I mean, it's not a political force. It's not the people who are writing swastikas uh, that you need to worry about. It's the people who are writing laws. So there is my, as Greg Proop says, boring preachy part. Let's see. Uh, God, well, that's nine minutes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. Actually, I'm gonna mention a couple things really quick. Um, I was thinking about uh, Yelp a lot, and um, yeah, I'll tell you about that some other time. Uh, yeah, I think that's its own uh, its own podcast. Um, so yeah. Uh, Greetings from what is probably Oregon, but might at this point be Idaho. Uh, hope you are having a lovely Tuesday. I am Lore, and I am on the road. Talk to you later.